Thanks, Zhang. Thanks, Zhang. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah, um, thanks, Zhang, for the uh, warm introduction. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Wenbo. It's my uh, pleasure here to talk to you about how TetraMem's in memory computing solutions can help you accelerate your AI, your AI workloads. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Do I just press this button or? OK, great. Yeah. Um, so the explosion of AI adoption driven by virtually every sector has fueled the demand for both. Um, do you know why this is not going back, going forward? Yeah, um, so the explosion of AI adoption driven by virtually every sector has fueled the demand for both general purpose chips as well as specialized accelerators. So the past couple of decades has seen very exciting time for us in the semiconductor industry. For personal devices, the industry is pushing our broad front to deliver ever increasingly efficient chips for AR, VR, mobile, and IoT. And innovation and use cases in these areas, including AR, VR headset, promises new experience and productivity and entertainment. However, more compute is required to really blend and create the immersive experience that blends the physical space with the virtual content. In the field of LMs and the Gen AIs, companies around the world are developing more sophisticated algorithms for video generation and the text creation, and there's significant demand to be able to run these models efficiently, regardless if you're deploying them in data center or on edge device. The explosion of AI has been fueled by the innovation in data generation, neural network, and more efficient computing hardware. But among the three, the hardware has clearly become the bottleneck in terms of both training large models as well as deploying them on edge in an energy efficient manner. There are many ongoing innovations to make the hardware more efficient, but we believe the fundamental challenges exist in the conventional digital computing approach. These challenges are the von Neumann bottleneck and the need to improve system bandwidth without scaling the power and cost, the slowing down of Moore's law, especially for SRAM, and the challenges in both powering the chip as well as removing the power from the chip as we shrink to smaller dimensions. At TetraMem, we believe that in-memory computing can fundamentally address these challenges. The reason is that the IMC chip can achieve high-density storage as well as efficient matrix multiplication in the same physical location. Furthermore, this scheme is inherently friendly to parallel computing, both in terms of data parallelism and tensor parallelism. And lastly, in-memory computing can lower the latency for large matrix multiplication, enabling both a reduction of memory bandwidth requirement and a subsequent, subsequent improvement in latency. So if IMC is so promising, why is it not already in every handheld device? Well, the key is to find a suitable memory device for in-memory computing that can meet the application, the PPA, and the product level requirements. For example, the application requirement may include a high IV linearity for those who's doing the analog in-memory computing approach. The PPA requirement may demand a multi-level cell to a to avoid the expensive weight combination as often seen in binary in-memory computing. And the product level requirement means that the overall system, including the memory device, must pass all the retention and reliability spec. And there are many memory devices out there from the traditional SRAM, DRAM, flash, to the newer memory, RAM, MRAM, and PCRAM, and ferroelectric. And I believe they all have their place in a memory hierarchy, and they all have their specific application in a niche market. However, most of these memory devices are not suitable for in-memory computing. <coughs> At TetraMem, we think that multi-level RAM, otherwise known as computing memory star, is the only device that can meet all these requirements from a device level. And until recently, this RAM has not been available. But as Kevin Zhang said in this year's ISSCC, emerging memories has finally emerged. Here's the working principle of a memory star. It is theorized by Professor Liang Chua at UC Berkeley in 1971. 
it is considered to be the fourth fundamental passive device because when Professor Chua wrote the equations of circuit theory, he showed resistor, a capacitor, inductor, all are well-known circuit elements plus a fourth device called a memristor, which was predicted due to the symmetry of the fundamental equations of circuit, but it was not invented practically until innovators have invented and including some of the early founders who are currently at Tetramem. You can think of RAM as a programmable circuit element that can remember its last stable resistance level. And this resistance level can be adjusted by applying a voltage or a current through it. The voltage and the current being applied in terms of both magnitude and the direction changes the conductance filament of the device, which in, change, which in turn changes its resistivity. This is very similar to the functioning of a human brain. And it has many, the RM cell itself has many interesting applications. Some people use it as a memory. Some people use it as an analog neuron. And at Tetramem, we use it for in-memory computing. Here's the working principle for in-memory computing. We first need to program the crossbar device in a fashion where each device corresponds to the weight of the neural network. A convolution or a matmal operation is flattened to the cross and mapped to the crossbar array. And each input activation is applied to the crossbar with either analog or digital DAX. The output of the VMM operation is collected on the bit line, and the subsequent normalization and the nonlinear functions can be applied. This architecture allows us to achieve efficient processing because we no longer need to load the weight from the system memory and the crossbar can easily support massively parallel matrix computation. We've built the strongest team to deliver RM-based in-memory computing solutions for AI applications. Our founder team has been working on IMC device for more than a decade, and our team consists of leading experts in device architecture as well as industry veterans in semiconductor execution and SDK. To be the ultimate intelligent solution provider, we've innovated the entire stack from the circuit to systems. And the team has been working on engineering the perfect device for in-memory computing with multi-level RM properties. And our software team has been working on a way to lower the barrier of migration of new models to this new exciting computing paradigm in an entirely automated flow. You may ask, you talk about multi-level RM, how good is this multi-bit RM? How many levels are we talking about? In our published data in 2023, Nature, we have shown, we have demonstrated 11-bit per cell manufactured in foundry. Yes, you heard that right. 11 bits means more than 2,000 levels in a single element. Achieving this is not easy. It not only requires investment in material and device engineering, but also electrical programming and algorithm. In fact, in this paper, we've invented a, te a technique to improve the noise performance of a cell that enables multi-level IMC. In this paper, we demonstrated that random telegraph noise is caused by nanoscale and stable filaments, which can be electric, electronically suppressed or reduced through our proprietary algorithm. Furthermore, we've also demonstrated the superior retention and endurance for RAM that paves the way for volume production. You may also ask, it's great that we can do multi-bit but analog computing cannot achieve the same level of accuracy as digital approaching. Because there's always issues, issues like device imprecision, circuit noise, and variation. And you would be absolutely correct if we didn't spend the effort to innovate on the algorithm and architecture. At Tetraman, we came up with techniques to go beyond the barrier of a single cell performance and demonstrate application level accuracy by using different cells to compensate for the residue in programming error of any single device. So in this paper published in Science a few months ago, we showed that we can achieve the same accuracy for scientific computing using analog in-memory computing arrays based on 8-bit RM cells. So this is the true analog approach. The weighted sum of multiple devices is used to represent one number and the and subsequently programmed into device is utilized to compensate for the conductance error or the residue error for the previously programmed device. So eventually we can use it to compute high precision floating point computation that otherwise a single analog device cannot. And we have shown that computing iteration number can be further reduced 
by increasingly by increasing the mesh size of large arrays, and our proposed solutions is more than an order of magnitude more energy efficient than the digital solution. Last but not least, the system on the right that is used in this publication, which is our MX100 chip, is on display at our booth just outside the door. And you can see our SDK running many commercially available neural networks to help you deploy your own edge AI models. We have multiple on-chip demos, including PCN, which is commonly used for AR VR applications like gaze tracking or occupancy monitoring for autonomous vehicles. Visual Wake Up Word, Visual Wake Word for Edge IoT device, and audio keyword spotting. I believe today our colleagues have their PCN demo up and running in the booth across the door. All of these have demonstrated comparable accuracy running in analog in memory computing as in software with much smaller power consumption. Furthermore, they are all real world use case models that can be easily deployed through our SDK and lowering the customer's barrier to market. And this barrier can be further reduced through the tighter integration with the ND CPU and the software, where the customer sees a streamlined software hardware interface, and their end operators can be seemingly mapped to our MPU function. So please stop by our booth to see our hardware running in real time, where we have prepared different demos, and in every one of these, we've demonstrated, again, our most perfect level software accuracy for IMC running in hardware. And they are all successfully deployed through our SDK. So although analog MPU is great in doing dense matrix multiplication, it is not so efficient in other things, such as vector or scalar operation. This is where, and they are used a lot in many neural networks. In addition, there's also a lot of nonlinear as well as non-regular operators. So for those and many others, we turn to our trusted partner Andes to provide the flexibility of CPU plus the vector engine as well as the existing SOC reference design and a mature compiler and N library to accelerate our time to market. So based on the TetraMem analog in-memory approach described above, the VMM computing can be performed with high energy efficiency in our MPU, and the MPU is integrated with other necessary functional units like DMA, the compute scheduling, SIMD AMU, and general purpose processor. The Andes stream port is a great way to integrate a world-leading CPU with our own accelerator. And the VPU's capability of generating multiple 512-bit vector length results per clock cycle enable us to enables us to execute many SIMD instructions so that our MPU can focus on dense matrix multiplication. This slide shows a uh, sample architecture of our in-memory compute MX1, MX200 which consists of 8-bit Mac engines that is through our proprietary MPU with more than 30 tops per watt performance for integer 8. The AI core operators, like the convolution and the gem, are mapped to the MPU, and the remaining operators are processed in the vector engine and the NDS CPU. Using the NDS IP, we can achieve a design that meets both the stringent energy requirements for dense matrix multiplication for our existing customers, but also, have a, but also have the support of a robust SOC that allow us to future-proof the ongoing innovations in the neural network and give us the flexibility to adapt the ever-increasing demand. In terms of our software flow, so the customers just need to provide us with their models, for example, in standard on X format, and our SDK and the software layers will convert these into the required models and generate the weights in the analog so that they can be mapped in our MPU. We have our ML model quantizer tool. It takes a standard AI model, which is typically in 32-bit floating point, and, and quantizes it to 8-bit integer tensor and integer operator while minimizing the expected accuracy loss. This can be achieved by analyzing the ML model identifies opportunities for hardware acceleration and transform operators to make the best use of on-chip resource, including the vector engine and the analog MPU. We have a network compiler that takes a quantized ML model and the network representation like ONEX and the maps to ML operators 
into our accelerator hardware, or the on-chip CPU. It allocates storage, schedules, execution, and emits a program suitable for compilation that can be run on the ND CPU. We also need to allocate, for different applications and different performance targets, we also need to allocate space for tensors, for the in-chip memory as buffers, as well as maps the scheduled operators into our dedicated hardware accelerator. We also need to partition large operators for parallel execution for multiple MPUs, as well as, a finite, as, well as to convert the results together using the NDs vector engine and the CPU. NDs have existing libraries for a DSP, vector engine, and another library, which really allow us to easily adapt and the opportunity to make some of our own optimizations that are specific to in-memory computing. We also, in addition, we also can compare our simulated versus measured VMM results and suggest modulations for the analog parameters to improve the accuracy. And lastly, we generate a ML runtime library of functions, which is carefully optimized for instruction and the data memory usage suitable for different performance targets. In terms of market opportunity, so our MX200 is great for vision and voice inference applications, and we're working out with our customers for initial production design in the 2024 timeframe. Our low power and low latency IMC is ideal for battery powered AI device, and our chip can deliver high throughput compared to a digital MPU, which allows us, our customers to gain a competitive edge in system performance. Last but not least, the high adaptability of our system with a highly automated SDK, supported by Andy's efficient architecture and a robust tool chain, lowers our technology's barrier to entry and the cost of accessing this exciting technology. So in conclusion, we're extremely grateful for the support that Andy's has given us in our mission to bring IMC to every edge AI solution. If you have AI models and is looking to run it more efficiently on hardware, please talk to us and walk you through our product spec and how we can deliver on the groundbreaking energy efficiency. If you're not sure about deploying our new hardware, please let us walk you through our SDK or the EVK program so you can get the fastest time to market. And even if you already have a hardware accelerator, we can talk about how IMC can help you accelerate your bottleneck workloads, either by offloading some of our AI workloads or augmenting your existing systems. I think we really live in an exciting time where the explosion of AI adoption and the fast innovation in both RISC-V and Memristor enable us to bring this revolutionary IMC technology to market. To me personally, both in terms of the innovation in in-memory computing as well as RISC-V, we're just getting started. There's still plenty of room to innovate, and we're proud to work with Andes to jointly enable this new paradigm of computing. Thank you for your time, 